I've been a professional photographer and cinematographer for about four years now and recently I've been looking for ways in which I can advance my skill set. Now I want to tell you the tool that I discovered recently and learned how to use has totally changed the way in which I think about product photography like a hundred percent. So in today's video I'm going to show you how you can take this and you can turn it into this. And you can do so for a surprisingly affordable amount. So without further ado, my name's Robin and let's just get into it. Blender is a free open source software that anyone can download and anyone can use. But I discovered ways recently in which you can use it to create some stunning product photography. And <laughs> amazingly, you don't need a deep knowledge base to do so. Now I am barely a novice at Blender. I really don't know all that much, but I did discover that you don't need to know that much to make some incredible product photography. So I wanna show you how to do that today. And you will need a few things to start. First of all, you'll need a pretty beefy computer. Unfortunately, Blender, as free as it, as free as it is, is a pretty intensive program. So you're gonna need a decent enough computer to run it. Secondly, you will need a prop or a product. Now, I'm a big fan of shoes and their design, so I was really itching to kind of get into that. So what you can do is go online and find a model of, of a shoe for free, or you can pay for one, or you can do what I did and take the, a shoe that you already have and make a photo scan and then just have a 3D model made of the shoe. Now, the way I did that was using an app called Polycam. Polycam is a fantastic app for photogrammetry and essentially lets you take a whole bunch of photos of anything really and bring it inside its app. They'll do all the processing and at the end you'll have a 3D model. The downside is it's not free. It's free to download the app and try it out, and you can absolutely make the 3D scans in the free version. But if you want to actually export anything, then you're gonna need to pay. And it's about $70 Canadian for the year. Once you have those things, that's pretty much it. Like genuinely, you don't need lights, you don't need an expensive camera. Everything is just built into Blender. It's Honestly amazing. I think it's time. Let's just get into it. Let's show you how it's done and let's make some great product photography. Okay, I'm gonna be totally honest right now. This is not the tutorial to watch if you are someone who's looking to learn Blender. What I want to do today is kind of show you what's possible and hopefully inspire you to go off and then learn. Honestly, I can't recommend Ian Hubert and Blender Guru enough. Just check them out. But for this, I want to just show you what Blender's capable of and what you're capable of doing in Blender with quite a shallow knowledge base. So when you open up the program, you will be greeted by the ominous base cube. So to get rid of that, we're just going to hit X and then hit return. Now, what we're going to need to do is bring in our object. So I'm going to go file, import, we're importing an OBJ because that's just the type of file that I got um, exported from Polycam. Okay, so <laughs> once you have opened up your file, you'll see that it's nothing but a grayish kind of blob. So if you want to actually see what it looks like properly, you can hit this little button here and we can see the textures. I'm gonna create a little bit of a backdrop as well because that was one of the things I wanted to learn straight away was just how I can create one of those so I can immediately imitate my own product photography process. So to do that, we're just gonna hit Shift A and I'm gonna make a plane, then hit Tab, go into the edit mode and I'm gonna select these two points here. Then I'm gonna hit E to extrude, Z to bring it straight up, and then release. 
that's looking pretty good already. I'm going to grab this point here and this point here, and I'm going to hit Control B. I'm, and I'm just going to pull this out. And with my scroll wheel, I can control the amount of segments there are to this curve. So I think that looks pretty good. Let me just bring around. That looks perfect. That's all I'll need. Now you'll see there's a bit of a gradient or like a, a harsh gradient going on here. So I'm just going to hit that and hit shade smooth. And there you go. That looks perfect. We have our two main objects set up already. We've got the product and we have our backdrop. Now, one thing that I want to do is create a platform for the product to sit on. So I'm just going to raise this up somewhat, maybe around here, go back and hit shift A and I'm going to add a cylinder. And then using S, I'm just going to scale it way down. And similarly, I'm just going to shade this smooth. Beautiful. This is looking fine already. Now, next thing we're going to want to do is let's bring in the camera and actually set up our shot. Okay, so I have the camera roughly in place, but we're not actually looking at it yet. So what I'm going to do is go over here in this corner and I'm going to pull another window open. This way, I can have one window that's dedicated to the modeling and moving and maneuvering of everything. And this one, I'm just going to hit this button here and that's going to bring us to our camera view. This way, I can get this full camera view and this is going to be our little viewport in which we can actually compose our shot. And in this window, I'm going to actually move everything around. So I want a, quite a dynamic shot. I want this to have be I want this to be full of energy and like something you'd see in like on a billboard, something like that, you know? So another thing I can do is I can just grab the shoe itself. And if not liking where it is, I can just angle it. I'm liking that. I think this angle is really nice. I think it really shows off the silhouette of the shoe really nicely. The camera angle itself is a little bit bland so i'm going to change that up but mostly what i'm going to do is i want to change the focal length because at the moment blender defaults to 50 millimeters which is a decent old photo length but i'm going to make it a little bit more interesting i'm going to go for 24 and you'll see it goes way wider and it really emulates the look of a 24 mil lens in real life but what i can do is i can actually come closer and you'll see it distorts the shoe. You know, that's looking pretty good to me right now. But obviously we'll see the shot is totally bland. We're looking at a white backdrop with a white podium. Nothing's really standing out. So I think it's time to actually give these some texture and some color. I'm going to go for sort of a uh, teal and yellow kind of look. So maybe if I make this kind of blue like that, and then take the podium, create a new material, and I'm gonna make this a little bit more orange. So we've got sort of nice contrasting colors going on. And okay, this is looking good. Now, it's still looking flat because what we're looking at at the moment isn't actually a rendered view. We're looking at a textured view. So we're seeing all the textures and everything, and they look accurate, but the lighting is totally flat. So it's time to actually change that and put some lighting in. And to do that, we're going to go into the rendered view up here. Now, when we click that, you'll see suddenly we actually have some shadows, which looks great. But one thing is Blender defaults to their EV render engine. Now, EV is great for its own reasons, but for my workflow, I really like to use cycles. What is happening right now is that this is being lit by the default light which is just the sun so i'm gonna get rid of that don't need it and we're in total darkness but what i am gonna add is a new light and i'm gonna add a nice little area light and i like the area lights because to me they are most similar to a softbox and you can even just see there that looks great that looks really nice so you know what, maybe I'll just like move it over a little bit over here. But what you'll find from doing this is that this is very similar to the actual process of product photography. Obviously, there's a few differences here, but 
all in all the fundamentals are the exact same so this is looking good i'm gonna just start adding a bunch of lights and we'll come back after that Okay, so I have gotten it to a place where I am really, really liking the look of it. I think this looks <laughs> pretty, I don't want to pat myself on the back. I think this is looking pretty professional if you ask me. One of the last things you can do, of course, is go into the camera and you can actually change the depth of field. So what I'm going to do is click on depth of field to enable it. And then you just have to choose your object, which in my case is called textured. And then you'll see here, you have the f-stop at the moment it's set 2.8 by default but you can change that to 1.4 but look you can change the blades you can change the rotations uh, you can even change the ratio which essentially is you can distort the bokeh in the background so if you set this to two you can make it look like anamorphic bokeh which super cool i've yet to do that but i think that is just unbelievable so i have an image here a model that I am fairly happy with. So what I'm gonna do is go render and render image. And it's just gonna start rendering. Now, depending on your computer, this can take a long time. It could take no time at all. Um, it also depends how many samples you have set. I set a lot. It doesn't need to be this high. This will probably take a while. So let's just get back when this is done. I'd rather Okay, nice. So we're here in Photoshop and one thing I'm noticing here is my composition is good, but not perfect. And I'm noticing that there's not quite as much room at the top as I'd like. Oh, my Garfield went off. Hold on. And I'm going to just bring it down ever so slightly, kind of where I think I'd want it roughly around there and then what I'm gonna do is just go piece by piece and I'm just going to content aware fill okay so I'm a little bit happy with that I think it's sort of spaced out a little bit nicer in the photo and now what I'm gonna do again I'm gonna duplicate the layer and I'm going to go to quick select I'm gonna select the subject <laughs> it nails it like it's it's not i barely have to do anything it's actually it's incredible so let's just see i think it i i think it's perfect let me just cancel that there make it mask so um i'm gonna add some text again i want to make this look sort of like an ad um and what i'm gonna do is the name of the shoe is called the nike crater impact so i'm just gonna make a nice little bit of text that just says crater at the back because I'm very creative. <laughs> and I'm gonna choose a nice font like that. Oh, that's actually kind of cool. And I wrote crate. So <laughs> let's let's fix that. Hold on. Uh, oh, there we go. Okay, it was just too big. So that looks cool. I'm just gonna mask that and I'm gonna bring that up to the top. I go over, let's add a nice radial blur. Oh, okay, that looks nuts. Hold on. But I think, okay, this, we're going to run, this is the right line. Okay, I'm, I think this is the right way to do it. I think I'm adding way too much. Okay, so I went through and I found this cool digital display texture, which I'm just going to bring down to the bottom here. And I'm going to change its blending mode to multiply and just going to mess around with the fill. Where's it gone? Just gonna mess around with the fill a little bit until I think it looks good. Gonna add a little distortion. There we go. That's kind of cool, right? I think it's adding just a lot of movement, a lot of character. Okay, so there we go. That's our final image. And it's nuts to think that I made this entirely with a computer and an app on my phone and just a real shoe. I didn't use any professional equipment whatsoever and yet here we are with a professional looking image now that just goes to show if you are looking for like portfolio pieces or anything there are these tools 
at your disposal that you can use for free that will get you professional looking work as long as you put in the work to actually learn the fundamentals of lighting, of composition, learning the fundamentals of the programs as well. Once you take all that, you can create amazing looking work for a very, very affordable price. So again, I want to really, really thank you for checking out this video. I really appreciate it. And if you made it this far, I want to thank you even more. If you end up creating something and you post it anywhere, please tag me at Robin JK. I'll pull it up on the screen. I'll put it down in the description so you can tag me. I just want to see what you make. I think this stuff is so cool and I'd really love to see what you guys are doing out there as well. If you actually want to mess around with the model of the shoe that I've been using today, um, just mention in the comments and I'll DM you. We'll figure it out, but I'll get it over to you. Obviously, like and subscribe if you want to. That's up to you, <laughs> but you know what to do. But if you enjoyed this video, um, why don't you just, uh, in the comments, share a song that you've been listening to recently that you've been really enjoying by either an artist that you already knew or an artist you just discovered. Uh, let's make a nice little playlist in that comment section and uh, <laughs> maybe I'll put it up uh, for everyone else to listen to. My name is Robin and until next time, I'll see you around. Why did I salute? I don't know.